Hello and welcome to Stupid Ancient History with Midgley and Taylor and our expert, non-expert and special guest James, Lord High Commander of the Science Cupboard, first of his name and knower of nothing. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> You've gone up in the world, James. Yeah. Very uh, fancy uh, title. Elaborate. elaborate. It is. Cheers. You're welcome. Uh, and as always, we're wearing our finest togas and today we're going to introduce the foundations of Rome. Uh, so I've been to Rome a few times. Uh, mm -hmm. Why are we talking about its foundations? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, we're not talking about the foundations of the buildings. That would be a bit too tedious and a bit hard to make fun of. It'd be very niche. I'm sure someone would find it funny. I, I'm sure someone would find it a little too interesting. <laughs> and I don't think I want to meet that person. No. <laughs> so the foundations of Rome that we're talking about refers to the establishment in the very early years of Rome. So well before it becomes an empire and well before we even we have the emperors and things like that. I, I'm going to ask, is this still interesting though? Because the truly mad emperors are where Rome really gets interesting. <laughs> uh, it is still interesting, but yes, sadly, no mad emperors. Oh. Although, there are some very, shall we say, choice individuals that okay. we come across. Yeah, I'd say that. I agree with you there, Mr. Midgley. So we're going to look at seven kings who initially kind of rule Rome, and they're then replaced by the Republic. Oh, and there's a bunch of gods that make an appearance and, you know, the usual stuff. Uh, back onto this again. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, you know, we're doing a few of these. Yeah. I've become... I've, I'm onto your tricks. I don't know what you mean. You, you, you're telling me gods are involved. I'm smelling nonsense. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty true. They might as well be aliens, I suppose, <laughs> for the amount of the uh, kind of, you know, realistic things that are going to happen. But it's not all complete silliness. No. Okay. Now, the problem with studying this particular piece of history is the amount of mythology that's attached itself, itself mm. to these events. It's really difficult to separate the two. Um, so, and there's some, there's some really obvious blending of myth and fact throughout this early history of Rome. It's just very difficult to have the stories without... It's like them. unpick it. Yeah. yeah. And arguably, these kind of first seven kings are entirely mythical yeah okay um and again if we go back to this problem the problem is that romans themselves created all this folklore and all these myths around their origins so that it sounded a bit better than they were just goat herders who did all right for themselves <laughs> but it, yeah the problem is it does overshadow the actual history of what happens no one wants to write an exciting history of some bloke who was good at raising sheep got better got i got better. rich <laughs> yeah but even so, what it does tell us is it tells us quite a lot about what the Romans wanted other people to think about them and what they thought about themselves. Okay. So the kind of image that they wanted to present to everybody else. Yeah, they wanted a good origin story. So I'm sure we'll get onto this. Before the kind of kings rose and Rome became prominent, was it just like a little... It was a field. It was a field with, with some hills. And a river. Se seven hills and... Some sheep. That's it. Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> Where are we getting all this information from about like when and how Rome was founded? Yeah, so for the purpose of the GCSE course and the purpose of these videos, um, the majority of the information we're going to use comes from a Roman historian called Titus Livius, or Livy, to his mates. Just L Livy. Livy yeah, to Livy. his mates. Yeah, so Livy was a Roman writer and historian who was born in 59 BC and was trying to write a complete history of Rome. So he doesn't just write about the origins of Rome and its foundation. He, he covers the entire period. Or he okay. tries to. Yeah. There was quite a bit to write about. Yeah. It took a long time. Um, so he claims to have read all of the histories of Rome, but again, he himself says he cannot separate the myth from reality. Yeah, and his main problem is that most of his sources have come from stories that have been passed down for centuries. Right. And so he, He's off to a bad start. Yeah, it's yeah. not hard factual evidence. Yeah. Because I imagine of. stuff like that, it just kind of becomes like Chinese whispers. They just Absolutely. change in a yeah, English. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, I mean, to be fair to him, though, he does highlight that some of what he's writing about is probably nonsense. He just says there is nothing else. How... You said he was, he was born in 59 BC. Yeah. How long after the fact is he writing? About 700 years. Uh, quite a bit, then. Yeah. Yeah. And it also doesn't help that he's writing under the guidance or auspices of Augustus. 
and Augustus wants to create a certain history to be written because basically what Augustus is trying to do is create a myth or a foundation story which he himself can use as propaganda to justify why he should be the ruler okay. of Rome. So before Levy did this, was there no formal record of this? Was it, Or was it all just word of mouth stories? There to... were some records, but a lot of the early stuff is the myth has taken over from any right, okay. factual accurate, accurate sources. Uh, and the problem is Rome kept getting attacked, so we've lost a lot of their records, which is not useful. No, not really. So is that it? Is that the best record we have? Some guy writing several hundred years after the fact? Well, yeah, but basically that is kind of all history, isn't it? Does yeah, because you've said in the past, like, if you're writing at the moment, you're pleasing whoever's yeah. in charge. Yeah, and also, with ancient history, this is the thing that we always make really, really clear. A lot of the information that we've got comes from stories, myths. So it might be true, it might not be true. Large parts of it is clearly are not true. Yeah. But you've got to take from that. It's not so much what's being written, it's, well, why are they writing that? What message are they trying to get across right yeah I it's mean, the symbolism isn't it with a lot of it and yeah kind of... and the, the background the content context yeah but yeah i mean we don't just look at livy there is a bit more than him to look at he does give us the best narrative mm -hmm. of the period the easiest story to follow but like with other parts of the course there's always some archaeology to look at so, I, to be fair, I, I, like I say, I've been to Rome. That's the prettiest stuff. Yeah, um, but the problem with things like the Colosseum and the pretty archaeology, um, a lot of what's preserved in Rome and Italy had actually been built on top of what we're looking at by later Romans. Yeah. So we're looking... If I, ideally, you dig up the Colosseum and see what's Yeah, it's archaeology yeah. on top of archaeology. Yeah. yeah. However, there is a sewer... Oh, okay. Da, da, da. Yeah, sewers is, really is, important. I mean, I know they are for practical reasons, but archaeology-wise? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, sewers are gold mines to archaeologists. Okay. Because where do you throw all your things away? Well, if it's important, not in a <laughs> sewer. It's the best place to put things. <laughs> so you're talking about the foundations of Rome. How... What scale is this? Because I know it became a massive empire, but obviously it didn't start that way. Yeah, then. no, we're, we're not looking at the massive empire, I'm afraid. No, so almost all of the events that we look at happen within a few hundred miles, if that, of the city of Rome. Right, okay. So it's quite yeah. a small area. Yeah, it, it's basically all happening within the modern Lazio region, okay. in and around Rome. Um, and it also, again, it's not so straightforward, because at the time we're looking at, 753 BC, the region is populated by lots of different little warring tribes. So we're not just looking at Rome, it's the people who are there as well who ultimately have to get shooed out of the way. Okay. Yeah, so Rome is basically just one of many small settlements. Yeah. Uh, who all of whom presumably don't get on very well. No, not No, really. not really. But that's kind of part of the story. That's why it's so interesting. Yeah. So, basically... Seven kings. One republic. About 200 years. Some major achievements, but quite a lot of scraps as well. And a whole lot of tall tales. Cool. So there you have it, our brief introduction to the foundations of Rome. Thank you for listening. We hope this will be useful. Leave us a comment below. And until next time, goodbye. Bye. Bye.